Welcome back to the Juice Bar. One of Hollywood's A-list actors buried his ego to reach the top. Kevin Hart may be the number on the call sheet, but he did a few questionable things to get there. Pour yourself a cup of tea and let's get into it. Reasons why Kevin Hart is considered a Hollywood mutt. Black actors have worn dresses to get laughs for a long time. A huge person in heels is a strange and by extension a funny sight, but at what cost? Well, it's a cost that Kevin Hart was happy to pay. There's a shocking secret behind his rise to fame. It all starts with a little-known tradition in Tinseltown, putting every black man in a dress at some point in their career. That might be hard to digest, but I'm not here to sugarcoat things. I'm here to serve you the juice. And our comedic hero Dave Chappelle has finally come forward and spilled the tea on Kevin Hart's shady dealings with the devil himself. According to Dave, Kevin sold his soul for fame and fortune. And you know what that means, right? It means he had to do some seriously embarrassing stuff that he swore he would never do. Who would have thought? Little old Kevin Hart making a deal with the devil. Now don't get me wrong, Kevin is one hard-working comedian. But let's face it, hard work alone doesn't guarantee success in Hollywood. So what's his secret? Well, according to Dave, it's all about willingly humiliating yourself for money and exposure. And apparently, wearing a dress is part of the package deal. It's like the Hollywood version of dress for success, but in this case, it's dress for fame. You might be thinking, hey, that's just a conspiracy theory, but let me tell you, there's some truth to it. Many successful black comedians have admitted they were asked to wear dresses, even when it made no sense for the role. Before Kevin Hart became Dave's target, a lot of black folks had already donned a few frills. For example, Martin Lawrence is well known for being the main character in the Big Mama's House series. One of the roles Eddie Murphy has played in his Nutty Professor movies is a woman. In In Living Color, Jamie Foxx was known for his part as the ugly Wanda. In White Chicks, Marlon and Sean Wyans played women instead of men. Let's not forget the Joanna Mann movie from 2002, no matter how much I want to. Tyler Perry, the right-wing evangelical who created the Medea movies, may be the most famous cross-dresser right now. Perry has been successful in gospel plays on the Chitlin circuit for a long time. He has now taken this success to the movies, bringing his modern-day coon show to a theater near you. Perry's new book, Don't Make a Black Woman Take Off Her Earrings, also made it to the New York Times bestsellers list. What's going on? Why do these artists make themselves look weak? And why do people love to watch the black men be treated this way? Some people might feel less scared and more at ease if they thought black men were more like women. Maybe the black man who dresses as a woman is a way to counteract the image of a strong black man that is often shown in hip-hop culture. Now, here's where it gets even more jaw-dropping. Dave Chappelle, our fearless truth-teller, actually turned down a jaw-dropping $50 million contract from Comedy Central because he saw what happens to entertainers who dare to cross that line. I got to write a show and do the show, and I was overwhelmed, and it was almost like... I don't know, it was almost as if this was happening deliberately. And you won't believe what happened when Dave himself was asked to wear a dress. He flat out refused, but the writers and producers kept pushing him, saying that all the greats had done it. They put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career. I'd be connecting them down like, why all these brothers gotta wear a dress? This happened to me. Now here's where Kevin Hart enters the picture. Just when I thought he was different and was convinced he'd break the cycle, he goes on SNL in 2013 and bam, there he is, wearing a dress like all the rest. Funny he didn't hesitate to wear a dress when an interview from a decade ago showed him saying he'd never wear a dress for laughs. Definitely haven't ran in a, to put on a dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you, have to have, you have to have boundaries, you have to have limits that you refuse to cross. <laughs> but I was like, no, I'm gonna look stupid. Yeah. I'm a brand. Uh, you need to protect your brand at all times. After his SNL skit, he even took to Twitter to say wearing a dress was a personal choice, and he thought it was funny. So, Kevin, what happened to setting boundaries and protecting your brand? While the entertainment industry still has a long way to go in terms of racial equality, it's interesting to note that performers have a certain level of agency in their choices. What's frustrating 
about these actors I've mentioned so far is that they willingly embrace stereotypical roles. This situation reminds me of an analogy made by Carter G. Woodson in his influential book The Miseducation of the Negro. Woodson described a scenario where if someone is constantly made to go through a back door, a time comes when they automatically go there without even being instructed. Yikes. Despite the dress-wearing scandal and even admitting to cheating on his wife, Kevin's career continued to skyrocket. He landed big movie roles, started his own production company, signed deals left and right, and became a household name. It's like the more scandalous things he did, the more successful he became. Talk about defying the odds! Maybe seeing him keep climbing the ladder to success won him Dave's respect. When it comes to Kevin Hart, Dave Chappelle's admiration for his comedic talents shines through. Chappelle believes that Hart's prowess as a stand-up comedian is often underestimated and underappreciated. Chappelle told The Hollywood Reporter that Hart is not just good at what he does, he's incredibly exceptional. From the very beginning, Hart has had a clear vision of who he wanted to be and what he wanted to achieve. And let's be honest, his ambitions were anything but small. Hart aimed for the stars, filling stadiums with his uproarious performances. His determination to reach such monumental heights was a deliberate choice, a calculated move that paid off magnificently. Chappelle describes it as a skillful shot, a hole-in-one. Hart knew exactly what he wanted, and he expressed himself in a way that aligned perfectly with his aspirations. It's undeniable that Kevin Hart's journey to success has been driven by his unwavering dedication and the realization of his grand vision. As happy as I am for him, it looks like Kevin's road to success is being cut short. If there's juice to be had, you can count on Miss Juice to bring it to you. Turns out, Kevin faced a shocking cancellation of his debut show in Egypt for a truly unexpected reason, his past comments on Afrocentrism. It's a chilling reminder of how easily misunderstandings can escalate in today's interconnected world. Now, our productions, the event management company in charge of Hart's tour claimed that local logistical issues led to the cancellation. However, the truth behind Behind this decision lies in the explosive controversy sparked by Hart's support of Afrocentrism. Afrocentrism, a movement that aims to highlight the historical contributions of black people, became the epicenter of a storm. Critics accused Hart of distorting history and undermining the claims of Arabs to Egypt's ancient past by suggesting that black Africans once ruled the country. This accusation triggered a frenzy on social media, with hashtags calling for the cancellation of Hart's show and a significant boycott gaining momentum. Now let's pause and examine the situation more closely. Hart intended to shed light on a neglected aspect of history and promote inclusivity by acknowledging the role of black Africans in ancient Egypt. Now Hart just wanted the narrative to change. We all know Hollywood's fixation and portrayal of slavery has largely put the focus on just that. Hart's plea to remember the time when we were kings was an attempt to educate and inspire, not erase or deny the rich heritage of other cultures. Unfortunately, misconceptions and misunderstandings quickly spiraled out of control. Hart has been accused of blackwashing ancient Egyptian history due to his involvement with an Afrocentric animation series. Now, it's important to remember that modern Egypt has witnessed plenty of diversity throughout its history, including Greek, Roman, and Islamic rule. Egyptians are a melting pot of ethnicities and religions. Their ancestry spans from Circassians and Turks to Black Nubians. Even Coptic Christians, who make up a significant portion of the population, also claim a direct lineage to ancient Egyptians. Maybe Kevin Hart's genuine efforts to shed light on an often overlooked part of history should be seen as an opportunity for dialogue and education, rather than a reason for division. Seeing his track record for success, I bet he'll come out unscathed from the scandal too. Stay tuned to find out as the drama unfolds before our very eyes.